welcome back to the show. It's 633 uh, on this uh, Tuesday edition, talking a little bit about uh, investing markets and kind of where we are. And here's here's the interesting thing. So we wrote this um, article out today. It's on our website, realinvestmentadvice.com, uh, talking about this is nuts. And what we mean by that is, is, is that the markets have been rising, not because of fundamental issues, right? So, you know, if the economy's growing, um, you've got strong, uh, strong earnings growth, strong corporate profits, those type of things, you would expect prices to be rising. Those, those should go together. What you have currently is, is that you have weaker economic growth, you've got flat corporate profits over the last several years, actually, and you've got weaker earnings growth and weaker earnings growth expectations going into the rest of this year. So stocks are trading well above their value. And this is why price to earnings ratios are pushing 30 times earnings currently. And while there's nothing wrong with that in the short term and looking at valuations as a, a market timing tool, et cetera, terrible idea. Um, what valuations tell you is what you pay for something today is the value that you will get in the future. And when you're paying 30 times earnings for something today, your future return on that investment is going to be substantially lower. But the reason that markets are running up is not because of the fundamental structure of the market. So the markets aren't running up because of trade deals. The markets aren't running up because of, you know, political movement, whatever it is. The markets are running up because of the Federal Reserve. And we've talked about this before. The Federal Reserve is injecting a tremendous amount of liquidity into the markets. That money goes to hedge funds that then leverage that money up. They take a $10 billion load of cash and leverage that 20 or 30 times. So all that money comes back into the markets. And the reason that the Federal Reserve has been so adamant about providing this liquidity over the last several months is because they can't afford another long-term type, uh, long-term capital management type event, which was back in 1998. You've got a lot of hedge funds now, you know, long-term capital management was you know, a hundred billion dollar problem. You're talking about hedge funds, multiple hedge funds now that are substantially bigger than that by magnitudes. So it's not just one problem. It is a constellation of, of long-term capital managements that exist currently in the markets that could create a credit problem. And this is the one thing the Federal Reserve is terrified about. So they're providing this liquidity. The, the problem, and we've got an article coming out on this um, on Thursday for the Federal Reserve, is that they have now gotten trapped within their own trap. Now, investors think that this is an immovable object. The, the investor sentiment suggests that they are totally reliant now, that the Federal Reserve has everything under control. They will not allow a recession or a market decline of any sort. So, hey, I've got to be long equities. I don't disagree with that premise in the short term. It certainly seems that way. And as, I, as we discussed earlier in the show, there's been a 45% advance, you know, angular advance in the markets you know, since October when the Federal Reserve started these massive liquidity injections. So there's certainly a correlation, and nobody's denying that. But the markets have come to believe and to depend upon the Federal Reserve to be the quote-unquote lender of last resort, support of last resort for the markets. And that's a, that's, that's, that is a dangerous assumption to a degree. Because you're now completely avoiding the whole reason that you invest to start with, which is to invest in companies that are growing capital, that make money, <laughs> so that your future return on investment will be higher. But yet, if you look at what's happened in the markets over the last couple of months, the stocks that are rallying the most are the stocks that make no money. They have the least amount of fundamental value. They're very risky investments. 
but those are the ones that are running up because they had a lot of short uh, interest in them. Those shorts have been forced to cover. That's been driving the prices higher. But this is what you see, right? And there's two things that have occurred. So in this past weekend's newsletter, in part one of This Is Nuts, we talked about the technical extensions of the markets, uh, put call ratios and things that suggest that investors are extremely complacent about their investments. Well, in today's article, we pick up on part two of that story, which is how investors are allocating themselves. And it doesn't matter whether you look at individual investors or institutional investors or mutual funds or hedge funds. It doesn't matter where you look. Everybody is completely long uh, the markets. In other words, their exposure to equities is now at some of the highest levels on records. Deviations from long-term means are extremely extended. And when you have this combination where everybody's literally on one side of the boat, right? Boats tend to tip over, <laughs> which is why you always have to kind of balance things. But everybody is currently betting that the next hand being dealt will be a winning hand. And they're betting all in every hand. That's basically what that tells you is they have all their chips in the table betting on that, the, that there will not be an event anytime in the near future. They are that confident about the markets. Now, the one thing about investors, at, particularly at turning points in the markets, market peaks and market bottoms, they are very, very wrong. I'm not saying investors are wrong currently. What I'm saying is, is that when everybody expects, Bob Farrell, one of the, probably one of the legendary investors of all time, he had a saying, he says, when all experts agree, something else is bound to happen. And it's, a, and it's pretty much just a, a bit of the contrarian investing idea that there are times where you kind of want to bet against the herd. If everybody's doing one thing, um, maybe it's an opportunity to do something a little different. And that's where money tends to get made in markets. Market investors tend to make money by betting on things that people haven't recognized yet. And if everybody's on one side of the boat, if everybody's kind of running off the cliff together, reminds me of what my mom used to say, right? <laughs> you go, well, everybody's doing it. Well, if everybody's running off a cliff, would you do it too? Uh, that's kind of what's happening in the markets, right? Maybe your mom's right. You know, everybody's running off the market, but, you know, if we actually want to make money, maybe this is a time to think a little bit differently about where money might go to next. You know, Wayne Gretzky, Gretzky the famous hockey player, once said, they asked him a question. They says, well, how are you so good at it? And he says, well, I don't skate to where the puck is. I skate to where it's going to be. And that's a very, very valid point, which is, as investors, our, our job and our, and our ability to make money is really best served by trying to figure out where the markets are going to go to next and where that might be. So where are some of those areas that have been underperforming, right? Energy has been underperforming for the last almost two years now relative to the rest of the market. Um, there's actually value in some of these energy companies. And we've been doing some analysis on that on our website, ripro.net, where we have been kind of digging into the energy sector, looking for opportunities. Uh, we haven't made any, any bets there yet to any great degree because there's still some concerns over oil prices, supply, demand, economic growth, those type of things. But there's eventually going to be a very, very good opportunity in that area. One of the other things that is also an opportunity is on a bet against a strengthening dollar. The dollar's been very, very strong over the course of the last couple of years, and that's been supportive of asset prices and supportive of, of the economy. That's been good. But with some of the policies that are going on now, um, with some of the attitudes towards um, kind of the U.S. in itself, there's a risk that we're going to see a reversion in flows into the U.S. dollar, out of the U.S. dollar, which would be a weaker U.S. dollar. And that provides for other opportunities. A weaker U.S. dollar is good for things like commodities, gold, com you know, precious metals in general. Uh, weaker dollars 
tend to make those stronger in the U.S. because those commodities are traded in dollars all around the world. So if our dollar weakens, we, can, we get more value out of those assets. So there's some opportunities, and these, and these areas have been languishing over the courses of the last couple of years. So from a contrarian basis, right? So when we start looking for where opportunity is, the goal is to look at where the markets are now and figure out where the puck's going to be next. And the risk is, is that with all investors betting that asset stock market prices can only go higher and they're taking the most amount of risk that they can do currently, that the next place the puck is going to go is probably not stocks. But again, it's about timing and risk management. It's just something about the articles on the website today, realinvestmentadvice.com. It's called This Is Nuts Part 2. It also includes our 15 rules of risk management. So if you really just want to try to figure out how to manage your own risk better, we provide the 15 rules that we use internally is in that article as well. This is Nuts Part 2. It's on the website now, realinvestmentadvice.com. We'll be right back. The Real Investment Advice blog. It's required reading for the informed investor. Catch it today at realinvestmentadvice.com.